starting date here was in 1961. Then I became a driver, an ambulance driver and a uh, dog cart driver. We used to go around with the councils uh, every day, the dogs home. We used to have about 43 councils that we serviced at the time and we used to go out in a truck with the uh, rangers from the specific councils and spent the days there and uh, we'd pick up any dogs that were wandering around and the city of Heidelberg or Preston Preston was a different council to Heidelberg but they were on the same par and they had a huge amount of dogs registered which was about 10,000 at that time right. which is yes. now nothing compared to what it used to be you know, now they have 30,000 that yes, are registered yes. sort of thing. It's so people have come a long way and uh, mm. we used to go around and uh, pick the dogs up off the streets and of course some of them belonged to people and yes. uh, rather than to putting it on a lead and taking mm -hmm. it for a walk, you just let it open the gate and let it go for a run. And of course then the people wouldn't be uh, happy about paying the fees to get the dogs out and having the inconvenience mm -hmm. to come and get them. It all reflected on the dogs home, even though the dogs home was working on the behalf of the uh, actual council. Things have, um, have changed now. Sometimes the uh, people are aggressive still because if they've got to part with money, which is a lot, lot more than what it used to be now, but on the same token, people are glad sometimes that their dog has been picked up and it's at the lost yes. dog's home because they can't find it and they don't know where it is and at least it's safe. <music> On one incident, uh, we went to uh, Heidelberg, I remember in one day, we picked up 75 dogs and most of them were around about uh, Oriel Road, where the flats are, yes, where the Housing yes, Commission yes. flats are. Sunshine was another place that used to be overrun with dogs. There was once, one time we went out in the dog cart and there was a female on season. There was a, a street with an H strip in the middle and it looked like a herd of sheep. There, there, would, have, there would have been a hundred dogs chasing this female. It's a lot different to what it was now. You, they used to have a register in yes. the office, in the main office, and every dog that came in would be booked in like a male, Kelpie Cross, black and right. white, yes. picked up from Heidelberg or uh -huh. whatever it was. Yes. The heading would be Heidelberg yes. or Preston or St Kilda yes. or yep. wherever it was, wherever the dog came from, what area the it location. came from. The location. Yes. And then they come in and they... Uh, get tagged, put a collar and a tag on them. But I mean, even if they did have collars, we yes. would put an additional collar on the dog. So when the people come here, they would know that sometimes, believe it or not, the people that come here and claim their dog and they'd get mixed up and they say, oh, well, that looks like my dog, but I'm not 100% sure, you know, like, and because it's got a different collar yes. on it. but. Mm. Uh, we say, well, we put a different collar on it, but if it had no collar on, we'd have to, but if it had another collar on, we would leave that collar on and mm -hmm. put another collar on right. so that people would identify it better with its own collar on. And, of course, then it was put in the yards, and they weren't single yards like they are now, single pins. They were uh, a community yard, like yes. which would hold probably 20 or 30 dogs. Mm -hmm depending on whether they were big dogs or little dogs. If a yard held 30 dogs, there'd always be 30 dogs in that yard. The only time they'd be down, so like say for instance, sometimes on a Friday we got 130 dogs in, right. in the one day. Yes. And then the following Friday, that 130 would be up to go. Some of them might have got claim and the rest of them would be stayed that stayed behind mm -hmm. and uh, then they got sort of assessed by the foreman and say oh yeah that one looks all right we we'll, we'll might get that at home and they used to go into the sale pens and the others used to go into the euthanasia yes. chamber or the mm -hmm. gas chamber or whatever it may be yes. at the time.
the ones that weren't claimed weren't all euthanised. Some of them were euthanised. Yes. You know, like some of them were scraggly looking things and they're skinny dogs or they might have had something wrong with them. It's a bit hard sometimes to see some nice dogs. Like a lot of the dogs nowadays get a chance to have a new home. Yes. Where in those days it was, if you looked all right, you might have had a chance. But if you didn't look all right, you had no chance. With the uh, going forward to the dog's home, their dogs are all in separate pens now and uh, they get walked and uh, yes. they get uh, behaviour mods and all that sort of thing, which had never happened before. The thing is that uh, the dogs get always get a better chance nowadays than what they did 20 years ago or mm -hmm. 30 years ago or 40 years ago. You know, like... Some of the dogs that you, I'd see here that go into the behaviour mod, in those days they'd take one look at them and say, no, put to sleep. So they're uh, getting a lot better chance of survival. Yes. It's a lot better. If I was a dog, I'd be a lot happier now than what I was 20 or 30 or 40 years ago. Yes.